Hi, welcome back to the channel. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video about the myths around EV cars, and it's probably one of my most popular videos that I've created so far. Uh, so thank you if you watched it. Thank you if you commented. And thank you very much if you subscribed off the back of that video. If you haven't, I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, go and have a quick look, but it's the five, five myths about EV cars. And because of that, I thought I'd do another video. This time, it's five more myths about EV cars. But this time, it's more about the batteries within the cars themselves. And there's lots of myths about uh, EV cars and the ranges and, you know, driving and, and everything can cost and so on. But this video is purely about the myths around the batteries. Number one, they don't last long. So this is quite a common myth that the batteries in the, in the EV cars will fail within a couple of years or a couple of, you know, tens of thousands of miles. Um, and then you've got to pay tens of thousands of pounds to get it replaced. This is a total myth. Most EV cars now have a battery life of between, the design to work between 10 to 20 years. Um, and that is also equivalent to about 100 to 150,000 miles. 100 to 150. 50, 100 to 150,000 miles. That's a lot. That's a lot of miles out of a car. The bodywork is probably going to fail way before that battery does. Okay, myth number two. They're not recyclable. And I am dyslexic, and that was a hard word for me to spell. Okay, so. Again, this is a myth, usually it's media created, where in the event of a battery failing or the car being written off or the car coming to the end of its life for some reason, that the batteries are then dumped and cannot be used anywhere else. This is a total myth. There are many, many projects that are now using recycled batteries from EV cars and they are powering small um, villages or small communities almost like a, a substation where they charge the batteries up using solar panel and then that energy then gets used during the night evening and night time um, to power uh, lights and cooking and so on uh, in, in some remote areas where it's very costly to get uh, power supplies plumbed in so they use a solar or wind equivalent and they charge the batteries up Okay, so they can be recycled. Uh, a couple of companies, uh, Redwood, Lifecycle, Northvolt, they are recovering about 95% of the materials within EV batteries, and they are recycling them and putting them to use again. 95% of the batteries being extracted and recycled from those three companies alone. Okay, myth number three. EV cars are worse for the environment than petrol and diesel-powered cars because of mining for the metals in the ground. Okay, so again, this is a myth. A lot of the minerals that were mined for EV cars at the beginning, when they first kind of came onto the market, was bad for the environment. Most EV cars now use either recycled materials or they are using other methods such as cobalt-free batteries like Tesla use. So that means that they don't need to use cobalt or mine cobalt to produce them. However, cobalt is still used to refine petrol for petrol power cars. So petrol cars are still relying on cobalt to be mined and EV cars have now moved on and technologies evolved to the, to the in the way that they don't need to do that anymore and let's not even get started on some of the child labor that goes into mining in some 
parts of the world, that's a totally different subject. But the mining of materials from the ground is not as bad as it is for petrol cars and diesel cars. As batteries evolve even more, then their capacities will also increase and the lifetime of the batteries will also increase. So again, that means that they're more likely uh, to not fail and have a longer life and then can be recycled again, as in um, point number two. Myth number four, cold weather. Okay, so cold weather will affect the battery of an EV car. It affects its range. My car has gone from about 200 miles on a full charge down to about 170 over the last couple of weeks, purely because of the colder weather. However, that doesn't mean the battery is damaged. It just means it's taking more energy and the battery is less efficient than in warmer weather. Come the spring, the range will go back up again. That's normal. Most petrol and diesel cars also have this same problem where running in cold temperature affects them more. But it's not as noticeable as in an EV because we have a digital display, which is pretty accurate in most cars. A petrol and diesel car don't work in the same way. So yes, cold weather does affect the battery and it does affect the range. However, it's not a permanent damage. It is just temporary. When the warmer weather comes, the range will go back up again. Okay, the fifth and final one. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Please consider liking and subscribing. and help me grow the channel. The fifth one is everybody's favorite. Fire and explosions. So... When was the last time you saw a media post or a news article about a car fire or a diesel, petrol fire vehicle somewhere where you live? Whenever there's a, an EV car, it always makes the headlines. Why? Because they are very rare. But also because the media likes to jump on the bandwagon of being anti-EV. So statistically, there are more petrol and diesel car fires than what there are EVs. So in America, they've got stats and their gasoline or petrol powered cars. The ratio of fires to cars sold is about 1.5%. So of all the cars sold in America on an annual basis, 1.5% of them will catch fire. EVs. It's 0.5% of those sold. So there are more petrol cars than there are EVs on the road, but the percentage takes that into account. So EV cars are, EV cars are only 0.5% chance of catching fire compared to 1.5% of petrol cars. I travel quite a bit with work. Uh, I use the motorways a lot. I have yet to see an EV car on the hard shoulder, smouldering or burning. I've not seen one yet. I see plenty of petrol cars, diesel cars, uh, wagons and trucks. Not seen an EV one yet. Okay, so they are my five more EV myths. Like I say, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And why don't you go and watch my next video? Which, which talks about how expensive it is to charge and run an EV car in day-to-day -day commuting. So, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.